Hey everybody, this is Ryan Douthat with Driving Sports TV and I just came back from driving the new 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. Now, this is a hot new entry in Subaru's crossover lineup and we are gonna get into it Wilderness. In just now, a little this bit. This is a hot new entry. And I just found Subaru. out I have my own audio looping back to me, so let me turn that off. Okay. So we are doing this live. And for those of you who are joining us after the live stream, yes, this is a replay. So hopefully all your questions get answered. We have a live audience. Everybody's filing into the live stream here to say, hey, uh, while I'm doing the intros here, why don't you go ahead and post where you're watching from in the chat? That would be fun to see. And, uh, if, whether you're on Facebook or on our Driving Sports live YouTube channel, both we can read and see, and we will answer your questions a little bit later. But first, I'm going to introduce who is joining me. I have a guest today, and that guest is none other than Jeff Zershmead. Jeff Zershmead, let me go through the list here of his accolades. He is the writer of the Subaru Builder's Guide, I think is what it's called. Yes, high performance high Subaru high performance. Builder's Guide. That is my car on the cover, by the way. I just want to point that mm -hmm. out. Um, Jeff has been around the Subaru industry forever, uh, but he's also just an accomplished journalist in general. He writes for the Portland Tribune. Uh, he's the editor of the Mercedes Star Magazine. What else are you doing, Jeff? I read, I read a lot, a lot for, for Sports Car Market. market. I do a, a lot of motorsports for SCCA. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever comes, whatever my, comes way. my way. You've done the Alcan 5000 rally multiple times. That's the event that twice. I crashed twice. I crashed on it the one time that I tried to do it. That was not excellent. Um, it's okay. It's I okay. crashed, I crashed too. too. <laughs> Did you? I don't remember you crashing. Well, well I kind of crashed, crashed and saved, and saved it. it. Yeah. But then, but my, then teammate my teammate really, really lawn darted, darted us in. in. Ugh. Yeah. So what car were you driving on that one? That was, that was uh, GMC, uh, GMC Sierra. Sierra. So people are saying that they're getting echo on Jeff. I find this interesting. So this is these are kind of the foibles with dealing with a live stream. I'm not hearing any echo at all from Jeff, which is kind of funny. Uh, Jeff, why don't you go to plan B on, and go back to your, your ear mic, and we'll see if that's better, because a lot of the folks are saying that there is a lot of echo on their side. Um, we are using StreamYard, which has a lot of cool stuff going for it. Um, however, guests have been tricky trying to get the audio to be what I'm hearing. Um, so we're gonna try, yeah, Jeff, actually, Jeff, don't you have, do you have your earphones in? I do, I do. I'm yeah, wearing yeah, my he's little got in. Yeah, somebody's saying he needs earphones. I'm like, you, you have earphones. We and were then, just using- And then I'm using, I'm using this mic, mic just on the- Yeah. So everybody, tell me, is this better? Jeff, start uh, listing off the cars you own, because that'll take a while, and uh, people can tell the, us if the audio is okay. Oh, I've oh, got, I've a, got a, old, 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 uh, a Marine, Marine Corps, Corps issue, issue M38A1, a couple of old, old minis, old, old MG, MG, stuff, like, stuff that. like that. Oh, interesting. So some folks are saying there's still echo. Some people are just saying no. Same problem. I'm, I'm okay. I'm getting, I'm getting the, echo the echo too. too. Okay. Well, let's switch back to the other version. We're going to keep your your input short and to the point, so there's minimal echo. <laughs> We're yep, going to keep yep. the conversation low, uh, but try to get in some of those valuable inputs. Brutal echo. Are your speakers on on your notebook? Uh, no, because no, you're just no. hearing you're just hearing on your earpieces, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're going to have to chalk it up to uh, uh, Streamyard being weird, I guess. Huh. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and move ahead here. Okay. Okay. And we're going to see how well this works out. And apologize to everybody uh, if there is any echo. We have done all the pre testing we can. StreamYard's just weird. I will be on the phone with their tech support immediately after this. So let's go ahead and move on. Um, oh, so we just came back. Jeff was at the launch as well, too. That's why I wanted him to join me. Um, we both were driving the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. Uh, we are under embargo still uh, because there are so few cars in the U.S. 
and partially because of COVID, but also because they want to be able to give every journalist equal time in the car before the launch so that they don't play favorites with certain journalists. So therefore, therefore, they have set the embargo for the 17th. It's a politeness thing within the industry. Yes, we could break it, but then we would not be invited for future things. And it's just not cool. You know, the fact that somebody can't get in the car for, for a week, they shouldn't be penalized for that. So everybody's our full review will be launching on Driving Sports TV, our main YouTube channel on the 17th of May. Are we in May? It is May, I think. Okay, May. And <laughs> what does have you do sign language and hold signs up instead? You have like, you'd be like the Looney Tunes. Boing! <laughs> so we have... <laughs> He is going to do it. Okay, so we um, we flew out to uh, Calamigos Ranch in uh, Malibu, which is where we were in the Malibu Mountains, uh, which is a really nice, steery, up and down thing. So we're going to talk a little bit about the car, but we're not going to go into driving impressions because those are what are specifically embargoed. The facts about the vehicle, those are not embargoed. We can talk about those all day. And instead of us just talking here, I am going to roll some B-roll so you can actually see the course that we went on uh, while we were there. Um, and if Jeff does, or if I, linger into um, embargo land, stuff we're not supposed to say. We're gonna have the angry dinosaur <laughs> cut us off. So if you hear the angry dinosaur, we've gotten too close to uh, to the um, embargo information. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the stream. This is me getting set. I am in the white one. I picked the one white one. And the reason why I picked the white one is A, it stood out amongst all the others, but also we filmed this on May 4th, which is, of course, Star Wars Day. And I saw it, and I'm like, that's the Stormtrooper I'm riding in that one, which means I'm going to miss every single turn, right? <laughs> Stormtrooper, get it? So it's, uh, okay, well, whatever. Um, oh, and we actually have a member of Subaru PR joining in. <laughs> No, Jessica, I'm not calling you a dinosaur. You made that connection. I did not. But now that you mention it, I think maybe we will roll with that. So we are being monitored by Subaru Corporate right now. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> so uh, we have to be really good, really good. Oh, yeah, Rosie the dog. Uh, Jessica from PR uh, has the cutest dog ever. She will appear in the video, I'm sure, because she kept jumping in front of the camera. That was you, Jeff. You just drove by me there, by the way. So... um. Here we are on the course. Now, the course that the the way these events work is that because we have a very limited time, we have a limited number of cars, and multiple journalists have to drive the same vehicles, we don't just go out there and thrash them. You know, these clearly need to be functional by the end of the day for the next set of journalists who are going to be driving them as well. But what Subaru does, and one reason I really like the Subaru events is that they set up courses that really do give you the ability to test the vehicle. Some manufacturers are a little light. Like, Jeff, can you, uh, th there's been a few PR events we've been invited to where it's like completely flat and you're like, like literally like. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're. We're going to test for a test. We're going to test for a off-road, off-road, my Miata. My Miata. Yeah. Exactly. So offer. So if you, I'm sorry, there's an echo on Jeff. Jeff was just saying how sometimes it's things like a, a Miata. Some of these courses you could take in a Miata. Subaru does not provide us a course like that. They give us a nice loose surface with lots of ups, downs, and specifically, there's some nice additions for this vehicle that we were able to test, such as a 40 degree, 40 degree. Uh, climb, uh, which historically has been really quite a challenge for uh, Subarus equipped with the CVT. Um, so this one gave you know an option to do that. Uh, we are going to be uh, taking questions uh, from the audience in just a few moments here. We're just kind of giving an introduction as people have an opportunity to funnel in. Um, now here I am uh, deciding, trying to figure out which way I'm supposed to go. I did cut all audio from this because um, for clearly you know, I don't want to slip out any, um, I, I don't want to slip out any um, issues. Oh, and Dean Lockwood is asking, was that a 40 degree or a 40%? That was 40 degree. So it was, uh, I think about like that. It is not, it is so steep, you cannot stand on it. 
um, because we used a similar, we used the same road for um, the preview and I had climbed down that road and I had, it took me like 20 minutes just to climb back up it because I kept falling down. I could not, I kept, I basically had to like, pull myself through the shrubs next to the road because the road itself was not walkable. It, walkable, it was so steep. If it was 40%, then that would be doable. But 40 degrees, very difficult. And yeah, 40, um, so uh, for those who know, do a quick Google search and you can see the difference between percent and degrees. Um, a 45 degree is considered a 100% grade. Uh, and so this is probably close to like an 80% grade, I think. Jeff, does that seem sound about right to you? All right, all right. And would you agree those roads were pretty darn, I mean, they, they, y y there was no doubt that was a 40 degree climb, right? Yeah, yeah it, was it was really steep. Really steep. And, and um, um, we, you know, you know we do, it, it, we, uh, yeah, we, we try to, conditions um, people might actually, actually be gone, you know, and, and, and do a test. Wow, StreamYard is really messing this up. Uh, can can you guys hear Jeff at all? Uh, this is like bizarre. Like in our pretest, this was perfectly fine, but now StreamYard is totally messing this up. Uh, StreamYard is the back end that we're using for this streaming to bring Jeff in as a guest. Uh, post a comment if Jeff sounds okay, and we should let him keep talking, or tell him that he needs to go just go get a coffee. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> I know I like having Jeff around just to give thumbs up and thumbs down. So uh, Jeff, you can just hang out, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, echoes galore. Man, you know you tested in the testing. Yeah, so we're gonna keep Jeff's talking to a minimum. He's there uh, merely as the audience and to give us thumbs up, thumbs down. Hey, there we go. You know, you could just use a hand, Jeff. You're on camera. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, this is a very, um, uh, one of the viewers is saying, uh, try unplugging your headphones and just using the computer because the software may be one of those like things where when you try to get too fancy, it starts to have issues. It's actually not a bad that's suggestion. Already. Yeah, we already tried that, didn't we? <laughs> that's yeah, what, we that's what I'm, I'm just on here. My, my speakers. Yeah, yeah, can't hear you. Okay, so I'm gonna carry this one all by myself. Um, oh yeah, uh, Jeff, can you pull up uh, the YouTube playback, make sure to turn the volume off and you can be joining in the comments section. Uh, oh, that, is that is a great idea. Let's do that. And then you can give like positive thumbs up, thumbs down as we're going here. Uh, do you, do you need the YouTube link here? Sorry, everybody. We're just trying to make sure everybody's getting a good experience here. Sorry. You need that link? I need the YouTube link. Okay. Sending it to you right now. Um, ba -ba -ba -da -bum. That should be it. Boom, right there. Okay, just make sure to turn your volume off. Okay. Uh, sorry, Sam, uh, you're suggesting that there might be two computer streams in the same room. Uh, no, we don't actually have that going here. And I am in a studio with a gigabit connection. We got plenty of bandwidth. We have 40, 50 megabits up. We're good. But anyway, so let's talk about this vehicle, this wilderness here. Um, the road that we were on, very uh, rocky, very steep, and I think that was one of the big highlights for this vehicle, was really hitting those really steep climbs because historically, um, Outbacks with CVTs had issue putting power down. And I can't give my opinion about that because that would be considered a driving experience. But you can see we are driving on very steep surfaces here. So roll that as you may. Um, recently, there was a journalist who posited that ground clearance isn't important in a crossover. Um, what's really important is approach and departure. And I would actually argue that both are important. And Subaru has improved them here. But keep in mind, this is still a legacy slash outback slash, you know, it's, it is what it is. And they've improved the approach and departure. That was one of the tests. I think that was a breakover test right there. Uh, but it's still not going to be a Jeep. So anybody who's saying like this will replace a Jeep, that's not what this is for. This is intended as a crossover that at Subaru actually commented quite nicely. They said that, you know, some vehicles are for going 
past some some vehicles like the Outback Onyx is for going too complicated comp, up complicated roads to get to a trailhead you know, an out of the way trailhead. This vehicle is for going beyond the trailhead to the more remote location. If you buy a Jeep or even maybe a Forerunner TRD Pro, that's for going beyond the trailhead so that you have fun with the vehicle off-roading itself, doing technical climbing. This vehicle is not about that. It's about getting you to the to a far-flung destination, uh, kind of like what you see Instagrammers doing, essentially. You know, going to that like really remote area for those beautiful sunsets, sunrises, skiing in remote areas. This is the 40-degree climb, by the way. I'm pretty sure that's what this is, and I'm prepping. I can't remember if I was putting out cameras here or if I just drove it. Oh, I just drove it in this one. I did this. I did this whole course multiple times. So this is actually, you are watching it doing a 40 degree climb right here, and I'm not gonna give any opinions about it whatsoever. <laughs> but you can see it is climbing, and uh, like usual, I do stop and start again. Um, so don't think that the stopping is necessarily because the vehicle couldn't go. Sometimes it's me stopping to test the system, which when we do the full review, which is launching landing on May 17th, you will hear more about that and get some more results on that. Um, let's go over some of the stuff that is changed for this vehicle just to get everybody up on the same page if you're new. Subaru said they did a ton of research and they actually, uh, for those of you who know the Mountain Roo community, they actually did engage with the Mountain Roo guys uh, to see um, what their thoughts were about this vehicle. And uh, what they ended up getting is 9.5 inches of ground clearance, uh, approach angle of 20 degrees, breakover of 21 degrees, departure of 23. Compared to, you know, family vehicles, that is excellent. Compared to a Jeep, it's not quite there for obvious reasons, but it's good enough for roads like this. Um, and then it is based essentially on an Onyx XT because it has a very similar interior uh, as the Onyx XT, plus it also has only a turbo motor. You can only get the 260 horsepower, 2.4 liter uh, turbo engine, which is the four-cylinder boxer, and of course, symmetrical Subaru all-wheel drive. And it also, of course, has X mode one and two, and the two is an enhanced version with extra wheel spin, and it will not shut off at speeds over 25. So you can set it, drive all day, turn it off, don't have to be constantly turning it back on if you're in complicated situations. Right. So um, now that we're all on the same page, let's take some questions. So um, I'm going to have to scan into the back here, of course. Let's see, who do we have here? We have people from Virginia, West Virginia, Romania. Hey, Romania. Uh, Oklahoma City, somebody watching from Philly, somebody across the water over in Gig Harbor. Uh, Jeff, you're down in Tillamook. He's Tillamook. He's down in Tillamook, I answered for him. Uh, he has a couple places, so sometimes I mix up. He has a place in Portland and then also a place out in Tillamook. By the way, Tillamook, amazing ice cream, but I love their cheese the best. The cheese, I mean, like I could do a whole show about Tillamook cheese because the cheddar I live on. I am made 50% of Tillamook cheddar. If you see me in the vehicle and you're like, that guy could lose a little weight, it's probably because of Tillamook cheddar. So just want to throw that out there. Uh, okay. Let's look at some questions here. Not about cheese. Uh, scrolling down, scrolling down. Can you talk about if the seats have been upgraded with different bolsters, bolsters or lumbar support? I would say having driven fairly recently 3,600 miles in an Onyx XT, the seats felt exactly the same to me. Jeff, thumbs up. Do they feel the same to you? Yeah, exactly the same. And that's a good thing, I think. It's not like, like uh, I think the Ascent, it's been a while since I've been in an Ascent, but I remember the Ascent being a little bit less comfortable. Um, and I just really like the um, the Onyx seat. I think that that's quite nice. Uh, so I would say no, if you if you do have, every body is different though. And we gotta, we gotta understand that. So like, just because I say a seat is super comfortable for me does not mean it's comfortable for somebody else. My wife has very different demands than I do in a seat and half the stuff that I say is good. She's like, I hate it. She likes the seats in this car. I like the seats in this car. Well, not this car, but in the Onyx. Um, and so we have not had the issue there, but you should always test drive uh, a vehicle to see if the seats fit good. Um, and let's see, uh, the heated steering wheel. I did actually, okay, so I also wanna recap. I did send Subaru PR 
not Jessica who is in the chat with us, but I sent it to Chuck, by the way, I think, and I got an out of office message. So I don't know if he has a, the, the week off or what, but um, I did send some questions over to Subaru and there was a few things that I'm still waiting for answers on. Unfortunately, I have not seen them yet. Um, let's see. So the next thing, thing. I, I can't remember what I was going off on that one about. Uh, let's see. Oh, it was the heated steering wheel. So yeah, that was one of the questions. Actually, was it? That was a question that I'm curious about because I know sometimes Canada gets a steering heated steering wheel, but we don't in the States. For a vehicle like this, it did not have a heated steering wheel. Um, and I really wish that it would uh, because I think that's something kind of missing um, in this vehicle. Um, Jeff, would you, you'd be a fan of a heated steering wheel in this one, wouldn't you? I think he's going to be answering in in comments down there. Um, let's see what would what would I like better, wilderness or touring XT? So I'm going to talk about that outside of driving impressions because I don't want to anger the dinosaur. Ah, no, Jessica, I'm not calling you a dinosaur. Jessica's from Super PR, and she's she's a wonderful person. I would never call her a dinosaur. She's the cutest dog too. Anyway. Um, I personally would go with a wilderness because it's more suited to my my thing. Uh, one of the nice things about the Touring, Touring XT uh, is that it has that face scanner. So if you have multiple drivers, it'll set up user preferences based on who's driving. For some people, that's an important thing. For me, we have multiple cars. My wife has her own car. We just don't really swap drivers that often. Um, also, you get a little extra sound deadening in the Touring because you have acoustic glass on the sides and the front not a big deal for me. Um, I drive, again, a lot of cars. So having the absolute quiet experience isn't the biggest deal for me. Uh, so I would say that uh, I would lean towards the wilderness myself. However, the colors are really like, if you look at all the different colors that you can get this car in, from the white to the blue, uh, to the black, to the green, the cladding looks makes the car look very different depending on what color you choose. Like this white here, I picked it because it is one of the most obvious, like here's all the cladding. A uh, nice shot there. Sorry. Uh, this is <laughs> this is in slow motion, clearly. Um, and so uh, but depending on what you think of the cladding, like if you want to minimize the cladding, obviously the black or the dark gray is going to like minimize that. So I don't think the cladding is necessarily an issue unless there's a specific color you want where the cladding doesn't work. Um, some people are going to love the cladding on the white. Some people are going to hate it. Star Wars fans, Stormtrooper, going to love the white. Uh, let's see. Let's go down to more questions. Okay. Wow. We are way back. I'm just, Yeah, the slow-mo crotch shot. You like that one, right? Uh, when will these be arriving in dealers? I believe they're supposed to be hitting manufacturing really soon. So we should see them in dealers by July. Jessica, can you uh, give us a comment on that one in the chat, please? Uh, if you have information about that as well. Uh, and then I'm going to guess here. Somebody's asking about the Forester Wilderness and the Crosstrek Wilderness. Now, there was some information that was leaked. Um, I do not have any actual information uh, about when it's going to be happening. I expect that we'll see... Oh, boy, I can't even remember because uh, I saw that sheet so long ago. Jeff, did you ever see that that leaked document that showed when the Crosstrek... No. Um, I, I mean, the way Subaru typically does it is they do one thing per year. Um, so I would expect that over the next two years, we will see probably the Forester, because um, the Forester is getting the next major upgrade. Uh, so that will probably see the Forester, although then that would explain the, why we would do Crosstrek, because Crosstrek's not getting a major upgrade next year. Hmm. No idea. Hard to speculate about future products, and Subaru is not giving. And the, because of COVID, everything's messed up. So any, even though that previous document that did leak is probably not accurate anymore. Um, some people um, I know online were, were asking, um, uh, what was it? It was about uh, changes to the drivetrain. So the the drivetrain itself does, so far as I know, does not have any additioning, additional cooling. There is one thing that is new that I am, I have an email about details. Oh, Jessica from Subaru PR says it will be, quote, in retailers this summer. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate that. Um, 
And guys, don't be bugging Jessica with questions directly. She works very hard. So I appreciate that she's here, but let's not gang up on her. Um, so there is a, an addition of something called a transmission pressure sensor that I have requested more detailed information about that is supposed to give it more ability to climb steeper grades. And how and why that works with that, I'm going to include in my upcoming video because uh, I do not know. You can see what it's done in this video. This is, for those who are joining late, this is my, uh, the, the GoPros mounted on my uh, loop on the off-road section of um, the course that we were driving these vehicles on. Uh, so this is actually the, the course that we did the off-road testing with. Um, let's see, uh, towing as before is 3,500 pounds. Uh, towing options are gonna be exactly the same, like the, the tow hitch and whatnot that you can get for the Onyx is gonna be the same one that you can get for the Wilderness. You, you gotta keep in mind, the Wilderness is for all intents and purposes, it's, it's the Onyx as far as most stuff is concerned. Uh, the only difference is, is of course, you know, the, the little transmit, the little changes that they made to the drivetrain. Um, and they are also offering more underbody protection with that secondary skid plate, fuel tank plate, and then also a rear diff plate. Not a fan. If you watch our live stream about the rear diff uh, plates, I'm not a big fan of their design of the rear diff plate. I would really recommend looking at a third party if you want one, because in my opinion, that rear diff plate should be able to hold the whole vehicle without collapsing. Um, the Subaru rear diff plate will collapse if you put the entire weight of the vehicle on it. Um, I think you should be able to use it as a jack point. Jeff, do you agree? Jack point? Yeah, Jeff has also driven in uh, the U.S. back when it was SCCA Rally. You haven't done Rally America, though, right? You did SCCA, right? Yeah, okay. And, and for those joining, too, we're getting tons of echo with Jeff's audio. So he's just here to answer questions in the, in the, in the uh, comment section and also to give me a thumbs up and also to be my audience. <laughs> oh, you did both. Uh, so Jeff is saying he did both Rally America and... Uh, the ARA series, which of course one became the other, which became the other. And I, the U.S. Rally series seems to every five, five to ten years has a new owner. So nobody wants to, I guess nobody makes enough money on it to keep it. <laughs> but it's fun and it's awesome. Oh, and hey, do you all hear Ken Block is racing for Subaru again? How weird is that? Uh, so we have Ken Block, Travis Pastrana. Now I'm off on a tangent because we started talking rally. Okay, uh, let's look through some more of the questions here. Um, yes, the roof rails. Uh, they are beefier, and uh, you have a 220-pound static weight. Now, they, they, Subaru is breaking out a new data point, which other car makers are not talking about. Um, the static versus dynamic weight. So static is when you're parked, and you have a tent up, and you're sleeping in the tent. That's static. And with static, it's about 700, uh, 700 pounds, I think, 750. I think it's 700 um you know i had this memorized up until we go live and then once you go live you're like home your whole brain just goes boop, shuts off 700 pounds static and it has a 220 pound dynamic dynamic is of course the whole load up there and you're going and so for those of you curious a, a, a foldable tent that's mounted on the top of a vehicle that's probably 150 pounds uh, so if you're rolling down the freeway you can definitely keep a foldable tent up there plus a few other accessories and you will be fine and it is a ladder type it's no longer the swinging arms the swinging arms had limitations on what they could hold so now it's a ladder type with braces that bolt on the sides um, and you of course see the call outs uh, let me pop up the shot of the vehicle here um, uh, let me pop this here and remove that. You can see uh, the callouts on the front there, and you can see the callouts on the back there in the adenized, well, on the sides, sorry. Basically, you have the tow hook mounts in the front and the back, but then you also have the callouts on the top of the vehicle, which are where the actual tie down points are. And one thing I learned that was new to me was the fact that the, the adenized copper look on the outside and the inside are all uh, active use points. So it's on the steering wheel, it's on the shifter, it's on the outside, it's on the top. Uh, and those are all active use points. It's like, oh, okay, so it actually does kind of make sense. Um, there are not 
proper uh, recovery hooks underneath those points though on the front uh, for those two points in the front and two points in the back. It does take an eyelet that goes in and then you can pull. So the big question is, is can you use those as a recovery point consistently? Like, can you go out on the weekends and pull a buddy out of the swamp who gets stuck? I would say it depends on the weight of the buddy. I would not use it to pull a submerged land cruiser out of a swamp, for example. However, a friend had a vehicle like the size of a Crosstrek or something like that. I personally think they are fine. Subaru will not commit to any of this information and I will not be responsible for the use of these things. But, you know, because they are not really, they're, they're intended for short like recovery things, but they're not really recovery. You know, they're not like, uh, in the aftermarket, you can buy these things that bolt onto the undersides of frames uh, for forerunners or for Jeeps that really give you these like massive hooking points that then bolt onto the whole frame of the vehicle to pull it back. That's not really what these are. These are for limited use. Jeff, do you have an opinion about um, using an eyelet as a recovery point? No. No opinion? Okay. He doesn't want to wade into those waters, I think, and that's probably a smart idea. Um, so personally, I've used them a lot in the show where we get a vehicle stuck and we have to pull it out. We use them. That's fine. But we're not doing dead weight pulls. And I would probably suggest against using a dead weight pull. Plus, on a CVT, it's not really optimized for that kind of low end torque and power. So I would say that it's not something you really want to abuse your Subaru with. If you plan on doing a lot of recoveries, that's something like a forerunner or a Jeep would be better for, because uh, those are the hardcore machines that are designed for that. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move down. Uh, bring back the turbo in the Fozzy, Adam West says, and I agree with you completely. If they came out with a wilderness version with the turbo, I think, that would be the perfect vehicle. That would be amazing because the Forester, of course, has better approach and departure by nature of the design of the vehicle. It's a good package. You have a really good power to weight distribution, uh, power to weight ratio, uh, and it's a good size. The Crosstrek is a little on the small side, I think, for off-roading, uh, but the Forester, mm, perfect. Uh, okay, so somebody, Tom, says, I am upgrading my Onyx to include many of the features in the wilderness. Tires, skid plates, uh, the X mode and transmission gearing are the only differences I can replicate. Am I missing something else? Yes, there's that transmission. Well, you said the transmission gearing, but there's that uh, transmission pressure thing, which I don't know what it is, uh, but we'll figure that out. And I, I, hopefully I'll be able to answer that more succinctly in the upcoming video. It depends on how much information I can get and parse out. But I would say no. Um, you know, you don't have all the, you don't have all the tie downs, uh, all the recovery points, in other words. Um, it's mostly looks. You don't have the full size spare. These are all things that can be replicated. I would say no. You know, you're, if you take an Onyx and you you do give it a lift and you add all that stuff, you're 99% of the way there, and the rest is mostly just convenience and accessories, not in terms of capability. Obviously, that final drive that you get in this one, the Wilderness, will be better for most off-road things, but I don't think it's a massive difference. Oh, oh, eyesight calibration. Thank you for bringing that up, Jeff. Uh, we're getting echo from Jeff, so he is now uh, he is doing it in the... Um, Looney Tune style. Boink. Uh, so that is also something is that your eyesight uh, collision, you know, crash testing. They don't crash test these with an Onyx that's been lifted an inch. This whole thing's been set up in terms of safety. So there are some safety questions. I don't think anybody's ever crash tested on purpose a lifted Subaru Outback. Uh, and so this vehicle that's being sold is known to be crash tested safe the vehicle you're building may not be. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but I think from a practical perspective, I, outside of those things, um, I don't think you're missing a lot. And actually in my preview video, we did touch on that. That was um, the Nikki uh, who works at Subaru gave us the the, the bit about how um, all those things are calibrated, you know, for the vehicle and, and X mode and all that stuff. It knows the height of the vehicle. It knows what it's designed for, and they've been able to nuance it for the specific setup. Okay, uh, moving on down. Uh, somebody, yeah, I've been seeing this a lot. As soon as the wilderness was announced, uh, Sam brought this up. Everybody's like, we want an ascent wilderness. 
And I don't think they're wrong. I think that would be pretty awesome. Um, unfortunately, I think it's going to be the last one to get the wilderness treatment, and it probably depends heavily on how well the other wilderness models um, sell. Uh, but I could see that as being a really fun niche vehicle. And with the addition of Ford, because Ford just came out, uh, what was that called? The Ford, um, the Ford Explorer. There's a new Explorer. Woodlands? No, the Woodlands is the new Sienna. Everybody's coming out with these things. Do you see they have a Sienna minivan? Toyota announced a Sienna minivan called the Wilderness Edition that has a one-inch lift. Yes, I've requested it for review. Yes, I'm going to do something with it when they can get it to me. No, I do not have a date yet. But then Ford also came out with their Explorer that now has... It's funny, it's lifted, yet it still doesn't have as much ground clearance as a normal Subaru. So... Yeah, take that for what it's worth. Uh, Explore Timberline. Thank you. That was it. You know, all these names start to sound the same after a while. <laughs> I have to say, the Timberline looks great, though. Um, the Timberline is really a sexy looking beast. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to um, pop them in. Uh, and yes, the Sienna review, I am looking to see. I need to get more specs about the vehicle, and I need to see what tire they, sh they, they send it to us with. Uh, but I will try to be as extreme as possible with that. Uh, Toyota seems to enjoy it when I do that to their vehicles. So yay, win-win <laughs> for everybody. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, but yeah, an all-wheel drive Sienna with a lift is great. Uh, it kind of looks like a Forester Sport with all the orange trim pieces. Uh, yeah, yeah, it uh, it kind of does. The the uh, the way they have all the color accents on that uh, Explorer Timberline. So for those of you just joining, this this is a slow motion shot of doing a small rock crawl uh, setup in the uh, Outback Wilderness. This is super slow motion, of course slow motion because it's not edited i just exported this for sake of of this little video so we can see it in action so it's going to be very dramatic as it goes over uh but of course in our full review we will you know you, you you'll see oh yeah <laughs> yes the, there will be a crotch shot coming up unless i of course stop it before that happens i might <laughs> Uh, the tires that this thing comes with are, of course, trail tires. Now, this is something that a lot of people confuse. Um, there are so many different grades of tires, even in trail tire category. So obviously, you have your all seasons. Beyond your all seasons, you have trail tires. But the trail, uh, all terrains, uh, but all terrains, there's sub subgroups so in all terrains you have the simplest is the trail version which i would say these are a trail version uh you then have your actual all terrains uh which are a four ply typically and then you have your six or eight ply which are more of a truck designation tire those are the ones that like if you're in iceland and you're going over volcanic rock you need a, a one of the more with greater plies but the downside is that you add weight and rotational mass. And so you really kill your MPGs. So, uh, and then beyond that, you also have the block design is a big deal as well. So if you have like a KO2 is the biggest, most burliest off-road tire that you're gonna likely buy and put on something like this, it's really popular with, um, like you could probably go to any Subaru dealer right now uh, in the US and you will see probably a cross track with KO2s parked out front because that's their own version of the wilderness. And a lot of dealers have been doing this for a while now. Like Jeff, you see those in Portland, right? Yeah. Uh, they basically are kitting out the vehicles from the dealer. Uh, and when they do it, they usually do with a KO2, but I would actually argue that a KO2 is not a good tire for the cross track. Uh, it's loud. Um, in certain conditions, it does not have very good grip on like um, pavement in the rain, not a good tire. Um, so when Subaru picked out, oh, here comes the crotch shot. When Subaru picked out the tire for this vehicle, they really wanted to like not be so much of a compromise. And so in doing that, you actually have other compromises. So it's not loud on the freeway. <laughs> Was that too close to an impression? I think that's a fact. I think that covers as a fact. Anyway, the tread block is really conservative. There's the money shot. Okay. Um, the uh, the tires have a very non-aggressive tread, uh, tread pattern, so you, in theory, shouldn't get too much noise on the freeway. Um, 
on on these tires, and but they're aggressive enough that you should get uh, better traction in uh, dirt. Uh, whereas a KO2, it's a super blocky design. It's for mud, dirt. Oh, and then of course, beyond all terrain, you can also get mud terrain tires, which have even more aggressive blocks. So once you start going down the rabbit hole of all terrain tires, it's a huge, huge list of things you can get uh, for a vehicle. Um, obviously, you're going to get the most conservative on this vehicle. And the, I've, I've mentioned this in the preview video that I did um, a few weeks ago. I love the fact that Subaru actually gave not only the same exact tire in the trunk as a fifth tire, but they also have, so it's the exact same tire with the exact same wheel. It looks white because it's white on the backside, um, but it's actually the same blacked out wheel as the main design. And it even has a TPMS sensor already in it. So if you do get a flat on a mountain, you pull one off, put it on, you're golden. Don't have to do a thing. Just go get your other tire fixed and put it in the trunk. Don't have to swap it back, which is amazing. Uh, the Ford uh, Bronco Sport that I had most recently came with all-terrain tires, very mild trail tires that I actually rather liked. But in the trunk was a totally different tire. Like, why? Why would you do that? Why would you go 90% of the way? But Subaru did it right. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Adam is asking if the wilderness seats are StarTex or leather. They are StarTex. They're just in a slightly different pattern with a honeycomb design that matches the fogs on the front. Um, and I like the StarTex. Um, I had that Outback Onyx XT for a full year. They never got too hot for me. Uh, but I live in Washington. You know, how often does it anything get too hot? around here, uh, but I found them to be super comfortable, really, really enjoyed them. Um, I have no problem with StarTex at this point. Um, also, it's for those of you who are vegan or want to be friendlier to animals, obviously, you don't want to be sitting on cowhide. So, you know, for those who are, are into that. Uh, will the system sense the spare tire while it isn't mounted? No, it is not. I know Mercedes will give you the, the PSI of the tire in the back so you know in advance if your spare tire needs to be inflated. Unfortunately, the Subaru will not. So I would recommend that if you do go outdoors quite a bit and you don't have to replace that tire anytime, you know, if you go for six months to a year without having to replace that tire, I would recommend checking the pressure to make sure that the pressure is correct or just bring a pump with you. I mean, if you're doing enough off-roading anyway, you're gonna bring a, an electric pump anyhow for airing down your tires. So not a huge deal. Um, I would love to see this hit Brown's camp. There's a lot of places I want to take this. Um, I would love to actually take this through Death Valley too, to see how well the suspension and see if we get any extra rattles in it when we're done. If, you, if those of you saw my, uh, my forerunner, uh, um, Death Valley thing, I basically was on vibrate for five hours. That was real fun. Uh, Jeff, you've done some washboard roads like that, right? Where you're like, at the end of the day, you're like, at first you're like, this is cool. And then about an hour in, you're like, this sucks. And then by hour five, you're like, kill me. This is, I cannot take this anymore. My body is done. <laughs> uh, will Subaru, okay, a Subaru has a whole lineup of accessories that are coming out and they're not just wilderness exclusive. They just announced a whole line of dog accessories like dog ramps and stuff like that. Uh, for their vehicles. I think Subaru, they have not yet officially announced a tent. Um, tents are complicated. Uh, I would say that it's probably more likely they will partner with somebody. Uh, they use the Tapui but I, in, in a lot of their presentation, but I honestly, I think I had heard at one point that that was what was available. There's no official affiliation there. Uh, it's like they, they, they needed one, so they bought one and that's what they bought. Um, but I would expect that Subaru will probably end up with some kind of a partnership. I think that would be smart, you know, go to the dealer, buy your cross truck with a tent on top. Why not, right? If that's what you wanna use your vehicle for, great. Uh, I, I mispredicted how tight this corner was, in case you're wondering. <laughs> it was tighter than I expected. Um, okay. Uh, kidney damage roads. Yeah. Uh, and actually, if I did Death Valley again, uh, there's a few other spurs I would take. Because uh, you know, in that Forerunner video, I basically just did Saline Road and then a little bit about the history of the place. I was on a schedule. I had to shoot the whole thing in one day. So I couldn't really risk it going into some of the more challenging roads. But I think it would be really fun to do some of the more challenging, not death-defying roads, but you know, some of the slightly more challenging roads, uh, maybe going out to like the, the racetrack playa or something like that. Um, 
Okay, what PSI were you running during the test? Uh, we were running factory PSI because that's the way that manufacturers roll. Uh, they do not uh, usually like it if we air down typically. And for this particular test, there was no reason to really air down. It was not that challenging. Um, the trail, uh, actually, I think that's coming right up, Jeff. Jeff is commenting there that the trail video does include rock obstacles, which include the ground clearance. I think we're gonna see that just as I go left here on the video that we're sharing. Um, so yeah, so PSI, uh, it's all factory. Um, so I, 34, I think Jeff, did you, did you ever look at the PSI on these things? I just assumed it was like 34 or 36, whatever the factory number is. Uh, he'll post, po he'll post in the comment. Uh, let's see. How well do you think the 11.6 infotainment screen holds up to dusty roads with the windows down? Uh, not great. <laughs> it is a big screen. It's plastic on the front. It will scratch. Um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend keeping a clean lens wipe and giving it a, a swoop like that, you know, where you're lifting, not rubbing um, across the screen uh, when you're done, um, because it, it does it does collect dust a lot when you're in when you're on a dusty road. And if you have, even if you don't have a window down, it just it just dust gets everywhere and you will get it pretty messy. And then you got to kind of wipe that crud off. And if you don't wipe it off, you're going to be scratching it around on the display. I didn't notice anything uh, like when the one year that I had the Onyx XT, I didn't notice anything alarming, like there were no big scratches. You want to talk about scratchable. My Forerunner already has more scratches now on its eight inch display than the Legacy had on its 11 inch. And I have driven i drove the legacy 4,000 more miles at this point than i have the forerunner so um it's not just subaru obviously it's a big screen you can get screen protectors i've been seeing people in the outback groups um basically cu custom cutting uh screen protector film on top of it if you want to that's a great option um although i already feel like it's kind of a little bit you know i, I don't want another layer on top of my stuff um Okay, uh, ECU calibration changes, cannot answer that. They did not say about it, they probably wouldn't say, and they did not have any Japanese engineers here because of COVID. Typically they'll have engineers out at this event that we can really pick their brains. Not, not right now, right now we're kind of doing pared down events uh, with limited crew, so no bueno on that. Uh, let's see. Um... Tires will need to be met. Oh, hey, Todd, how you doing? Tires, okay, so uh, we have another person from Subaru Corporate here. Tires will need to be matched based on wear. So it is still a spare tire, even if it is the same spec. That is a good point. So if you are driving your tire, you know, if you have driven your, your car more than a thousand miles, you will be accruing some wear on your tire. So even though you do swap your tire out on the mountain and drive back down, it is true that if you have a tread difference that you wanna make sure that you get them all back to normal. Um, so you don't necessarily, if you've been driving for two years on one set of tires and you put a spare on, you don't wanna leave that spare on all the time because the tread, it will be slightly different. And even though these systems can deal with that for a little bit, uh, you don't wanna be driving long distances, long speed, uh, high speeds and that kind of stuff with an all wheel drive vehicle with mismatched tires. It's not good for the drivetrain. Uh, any wilderness accessories you recommend? Uh, mm, normally I would recommend skid plates, but I have to say that the primitive skid plates are so nice. Uh, they're next level. I, I would say that if you're casually just going to trailheads, the Subaru ones are fine. If you plan on like serious adventuring, like off the beaten path, definitely get the full primitive underbody protection kit. I think it is a better set up and they are gorgeous. Actually, let me go grab one. So of course I just happen, just happen to have a massive skid plate right here from uh, Primitive. So uh, you'll see this thing's a little bit bigger than the Subaru one. It's like twice the size and it's, that that is some strong stuff. And it even has a beautifully tailored 
oil drain point right here that you just remove that off and go off. And they have the full underbody kits for these things. Oh my God, that's that does add weight though. So uh, <laughs> yeah, the primitive stuff is amazing. You can jack up a car with that. You can jack up a car. Any of the underbody skid plates from primitive, you just put a jack on and lift the whole car and it's fine. Um, they also have a really good, you can get the whole kit from them. Um, I don't think the, we need to confirm that the mounting points are going to be the same still and primitive won't sell it to you until they do confirm that. Um, but you might give them a call and see I, the moment they see one, they'll try throwing one of these on and, and I'm actually keeping this around cause I'm hoping that Jessica, that I get another wilderness long-term so we can put that on it and see if it fits. Anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, got more questions. Um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, so uh, specific options uh, that are specific to the wilderness. Uh, there's nothing else I, I mean, the wilderness comes pretty preloaded, which is kind of nice, you know? Uh, I would get a roof rack uh, that, where I could put um, uh, recovery boards and a shovel. I'm actually shopping for those right now for my Forerunner. I have not decided what. The problem I'm finding is that a lot of the custom ones, like the really nice ones, they're one year out on manufacturing. It's like, wow, I, I need it now. I don't need it in a year. Um, okay, let's move on. Is there any insight about when some, some of the parts used on the wilderness might be available in the supply system to order? The hood sticker, the black window trim to replace the chrome window trim on the Onyx. Yes, I do agree that the window trim on the Onyx should not have been chrome. It should have been blacked out. That would have looked amazing, but uh, no, not yet. Oh, and um, let's talk about 2022 Onyx XT, all the changes it's getting. Ready? I have all the facts for you right now. This is an exclusive. I know Jessica and uh, Todd from Subaru are like, what's he going to say? They're exactly the same. Yeah, it's 2022 is a complete carryover for all other uh, Outbacks, according to Subaru. So the 2021 Outback uh, Onyx is exactly the same as the 2022. Uh, that's according to Subaru PR. And um, so the Wilderness is the only change that they're getting is this new model. Now, the big question, I think, is that because of the Crosstrek Hybrid. Now, let's let's remember the Crosstrek Hybrid from several years ago. Not the most recent one, not the PHEV, the one before that, the green one, which I see like once every six months on the road. Um, th that vehicle was all new interior and was exclusive to that vehicle the year it came out. The following year, all the Subarus got the same interior. So I'm guessing that there we might see some of these elements trickle to the other vehicles in 2023 when they do the next redesign. Uh, you know, not redesign, but the mid-cycle refresh. Uh, but who knows? That's a long time away. And by then, we'll probably have a Forester wilderness that we'll be playing with. And hopefully, we'll be getting hearing rumors of an Ascent wilderness because that would be boss. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Yukon person brings up TFL. Uh, moving on. Uh, I like Roman. He's a good guy. They, um, their Subaru testing, well, moving on. Um, Todd from Subaru says, replacement parts are typically available around the time that the vehicles arrive. So uh, some of the accessory parts may arrive a little bit earlier. Todd, I did email uh, Chuck asking if the, the applique sticker was going to be a part number. Is that something that people can order for their vehicles? Uh, do you know if that's going to be an, an, an option uh, in terms of like a part number option that people can order. Uh, because obviously you can go to a sticker guy and just have him do it, but it would be so much easier if you can just call up Subaru and say, yeah, give me part number, blah, 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 blah. Um, is the Wilderness better on off-road all-rounder than the Forerunner? Okay, so I have to avoid the dinosaur. So I am not going to give driving impressions, but I will say that if you just look, I, I, have, to, I have to approach this from somebody who has not driven the vehicle. Um, if you just look at the the way that the vehicles are positioned and the way that they are designed, the um, the Subaru Wilderness being the Outback Wilderness being more of a car unibody, the Forerunner being more of a truck, a more truck like experience is better off road in certain conditions, better approach angles, better departure angle, better break over. Um, the car based unibody is going to be better on the road in general, and so because of that. 
uh, just using that logic, uh, I would say that if 90% of your life is on the road, you're going to much have much more enjoyment out of the outback wilderness than you would otherwise. However, the Forerunner will get you deeper into the woods, especially the TRD models. That's just nature of the way the system is designed. Also, the crawl control feature. I did, I every time I have driven, I have now you know, seen this car twice, and every single time I bug the PR people, need to add crawl control to the wilderness. You add crawl control, game over. Like, why would you buy anything else? I mean, there's there's reasons, but you know, if you had the ability to crawl out of a sand pit with this thing by hitting a button, perfect. That that would be amazing. And the fact that uh, Ford has added a trail control, which is their equivalent uh, to the Ford Bronco Sport, I think says a lot that that's kind of what's what's coming next. Okay. Uh, Todd Hill from Subaru does say that the hood graphic will be a replacement part. It is not an accessory. Good. So it'll be a replacement part. Oh, wait. If it's a replacement part, doesn't that mean that you have to have a VIN that it's appropriate for, like the STI stuff? Or is it something you can actually buy by? Like buy. We'll see if you can answer on that one. Uh, yeah, and that this is something to keep in mind too. Subarus are already very capable. If you put the correct tire on them, like if you take any Subaru and you put a proper tire on it, it still has best in class ground clearance. It still has a really good all wheel drive system. Do you need a wilderness to go, you know, deeper and deeper into the woods? Eh, probably not. You can probably do 90% of I I know most of the problems that I have are me, not the vehicle. Uh, because most of these vehicles are amazing. Like Jeff, you've driven some old cars that, you know, it's not the car most of the time. Usually it's the driver. Is there an approach? Now, yeah, you, you know, I can set up a situation where it's like, oh, well, no other car could get up this. And yeah, it's true. But usually there's another way you could have gone or a way to do it or something. So do you need to trade in your Subaru to get this one? Eh, probably not. It's you know, unless there's something very specific, I would say you would get this one if you're ready for a new car anyway. But I wouldn't trade in like an Onyx, like ah, oh, it's the crotch shot again. Sorry, I, I I I just I just exported the whole reel. I didn't I didn't mean to do that. Um, Todd says you can buy without the VIN Subaru uh, for the front sticker. Subaru retailers will often ask customers the VIN when looking the part number up because it's quicker for them. Uh, yeah, agreed. So thoughts on the new Wilderness Edition X-Mode calibration. Uh, that would be part of embargo. Um, I will say that from a non-embargo perspective, the ability to turn on an off-road system and have it not shut off for you is an actually valid thing that needs to be on a vehicle that purports to be an off-road vehicle of any caliber. You know, if you're, on, I have been on the sides of mountains covered in snow barely crawling forward as all four wheels are chugging to get me through it. And if those systems shut off halfway through getting through the deep snow drift, that's not good. So I think that it's, uh, it is just by nature of what it's supposed to do is a valuable addition. And it's one of those things you see on a sheet and you're like, good, they needed to do that. I still think they also need to add a crawl control feature. Do we know tire options for this? Uh, yeah, as Jeff points out, they didn't mention any tire options, uh, just the ones that they had certified, which are these Geolander, Yokohama Geolanders. Now, this is important. If you're looking up the specs of the Geolanders, I'm not sure how to pronounce it because there's an extra A in there, Ge Geolandar. Uh, I think it's just Geolander. Um, there is a more hardcore Geolander tire. So if you're looking it up, make sure that you're looking at the Subaru spec one, which I don't think you can get in aftermarket yet because I think it's a new tire. Uh, but, you know, it's just like uh, the Falcon Wild Peaks so you can get on the Bronco Sport. Uh, those are not the aggressive ones. Those are the trail ones, which on my 4Runner, I now have the aggressive ones and they are very different tires. They just happen to have the same name. So if you do look up specs on the Geolander, make sure you're looking at the right spec, not just a Geolandar, or you'll see that it's like, yes, good for extreme off-road. These are not, these are mild all-terrain tires, which are a nice improvement, good compromise. And I'll give you my opinion later about that. 
I think we're going to probably wind this up now. Uh, I want to go get some lunch. I'm sure everybody wants to get some lunch. Uh, so I want to thank my guest, Jeff. Sorry we didn't have audio on you because the echo in this system sucks. So I'm going to have to find a alternate uh, way of bringing guests in. I mean, there's 50 ways I can do it. I can bring them in whatever. I have a whole studio here. But I thought this would be an easy way because they say it works, but it doesn't. Anyway, so uh, Jeff, thank you for taking uh, time out of your morning to join us here. It's always great to have somebody else to talk to. I also really want to thank um, the guys from Subaru for jumping into the chat. I didn't know they were going to be here, and it's really great to have them on the line as well. Uh, so thank you to Todd and Jessica. Um, looking forward to see you guys again. Uh, anytime you want to deliver me a long-term wilderness, I am ready to accept it. Uh, and again, thank you everybody. Please sure to subscribe. I need to get a thousand subscribers on this channel so I can get my own custom link. And I can also start streaming live on a mobile device. That's one of the restrictions that YouTube gives. So please hit subscribe, even if you don't plan on keeping a subscription for all time. Subscribe so I can get to that thousand so I can start getting some of the extra features on this secondary channel. Of course, also on our main channel, we have the full reviews. I have a full preview of this vehicle that I posted a few weeks ago. It has like 600,000 views or something. Uh, that is available on our main channel. And the full review for the wilderness will be coming up on May 17th at 9 a.m. Pacific. Thank you, everybody, for watching. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. We'll see you again right here next week. Bye.